Creating a Better World. One Community Weekly Progress Update number 230. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do it yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable. I'm the executive director of the One Community 51C3 nonprofit organization. This is our weekly progress update number 230, August 20th, 2017 edition. Before I jump into the updates, let's talk about creating a better world. Is this really what One Community is all about? We believe that it's possible to create a world that truly works for everybody within our lifetime. And our path to creating that is through a self-replicating sustainability model that gives people more of what they want in their lives. More freedom, higher quality food, better quality air, water, more things to do with their time and more time to do those things. And ultimately, a better world for everybody. And this is possible through what we describe as an evolution of sustainability built on the foundations of sustainability that everybody is aware of, which are food, energy, and housing, and combined with an evolution of sustainability that includes fulfilled living practices, highest good economic models, highest good education models, as well as true earth stewardship. Putting those things together is an evolution of sustainability to create a better life and a better way of living that is replicable. And we believe that if we make it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrate it's attractive enough, that it's not only replicable, but that it will become self-replicating. And that is the path to creating a better world for everybody. We believe that the only way that we could create a path, create a world that works for everybody within our lifetime is by creating a self-replicating model. The model has to self-replicate. And if it self-replicates and you just take 50 people and start with 50 people and does demonstrate a sustainable community model that self-replicates, if that those 50 people and that model can inspire two additional sustainable communities to begin the next year, and that can inspire an additional four the year after that, and an additional eight, and then 16, and then 32. And if you run this process out, just replicating like that 30 times is enough to cover the entire population of the planet. And that's not actually necessary to create a world that truly works for everybody. We only need to get a majority of the population to be living a life that is in the highest good of all of the planet. And we will achieve a world that works for everybody. We will create a sustainable civilization, a sustainable planet for the benefit of all people and all life on it. And so this is our idea for creating a better world, open sourcing and free sharing all the tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions that are necessary for achieving that goal, creating a better world through a self-replicating model that creates a way of living that is better than the way people are living right now, that is replicable in any environment throughout the planet, that does not require sustainable villages and communities in isolation. It can be replicated in urban environments as well and designed to provide more of what people want so that it becomes self-replicating, but also designed with consciousness for the highest good of all and individual components that can be replicated as individual components. It doesn't have to be the complete model, but the complete model is, per is, is really specifically to be a teacher demonstration hub designed to teach others how to create teacher demonstration hubs as well. So everything that you see happening in the background here, the sustainable village models, the education models, the highest good economic models, all this stuff, it's just a taste of what it is that we're creating and definitely just a taste of what we're going to create. Because ultimately, creating a better world, in our opinion, is something that people need to experience first, and then they will be motivated to create it for themselves, either for philanthropic and humanitarian reasons, because that's a foundation of why we're doing it, or for entirely selfish reasons. And that is absolutely fine. We believe that if it was just to do good in the world that people were going to create something like this, it'd already be done. But the reality of it is, is that's not enough. We need people that will do it just for their own reasons as well. We need a model that is sufficient to motivate people for just those reasons to adopt it. And it's flexible enough for all value systems, for diverse needs, for diverse ideas, so that it can be modified, adapted, upgraded, improved, evolved to be even better. So that our concept, our idea of what is in the highest good of all is just the foundation. Because we, haven't, we don't really know what's in the highest good of all. We're just doing our best to create that because we believe that is the foundation of the path for creating a better world for all. So this 
is how one community is creating world change. This is our idea, and we believe that this model, what it is that we're doing, is the foundation for addressing all of the most significant challenges that humanity is facing right now. By creating a world that's for the highest good of all, when we talk about that, we mean creating a world that addresses global poverty, global hunger, uh, global, global, self uh, global injustice, and social injustice, and inequality that embraces diversity, that provides for, that, that addresses war and crime. And how do we do that? Through a self-sufficient, we believe, through a self-sufficient and sustainable model that provides for people's needs so that they don't want anything, so they don't need anything outside of what it is that they're capable of creating for themselves, but so that they have access to all of that. And we believe that from that place that people have what they want and what they need taken care of, we think that a higher percentage of people will be interested in helping others. And as I said before, it doesn't require all of humanity to create a better world for everybody. It only creates a small percentage of people that are interested in creating a better world for everybody. And a majority of humanity, like just over the tipping point of humanity, be participating, not necessarily for the goals of creating a better world for everybody, but possibly just for selfish reasons. And that can be enough to cross that tipping point necessary to create a completely sustainable world, a truly sustainable civilization. And in doing that, we will have provided a world that works for everybody. And like I said, not everybody needs to be participating for humanitarian or philanthropic reasons. They may be participating for selfish reasons, and that's okay. Because it's built on a foundation of highest good of all living and thinking and creating, it's still a step in the right direction. And it only takes a small percentage of people creating the teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, and hubs, and that, and that running and operating that global collaboration and global cooperative, creating a better world for everybody, to provide enough open source tutorials, resources, blueprints, and do-it-yourself instructions to build the foundation so that everybody will benefit. This is what one community is up to. So with that said, now let's take a look at one week of our team's progress and accomplishments. Our all-volunteer, nonprofit, we're a non-governmental organization. Nobody's paid for what it is that we're doing. We're all-volunteer team, and here is one week of our progress and accomplishments working towards creating a better world for everybody. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team, which includes the pioneer members plus those helping who don't wish to be individually acknowledged, finished the heat exchanger video you see playing in the background here. This video shows our initial testing and results for the heat exchangers that will be used in the Earthbag Village communal eco shower designs. Once we finished this video, we also added it to the communal eco shower page and updated the page with a parts list, testing descriptions, and other details as shown here. And we remastered and added the final 18 images. The core team also continued working in SketchUp on the open source outdoor areas of the Recycled Materials Village Pod 6. We checked and replaced all repetitive items with easier to render components, created a bench with back support and tires, see the top right picture that inspired the idea, and began designing a bench with roof and bookshelves. In addition to this, the core team created this initial render of this view from inside the Treehouse Village Pod 7. You can see the before and after here with notes showing we'll be updating the trees next. Heymanth Kotaru, structural engineering master's student, completed his third week with us by conducting additional Earthbag Village construction research. This week's focus was buttressing and doorways, and you can see a summary of the findings so far here. And Christian Ojeda, mechatronic engineer, completed his 23rd week helping with the heat recycling communal eco shower and vermiculture bathroom designs. This week's focus was an updated plumbing layout that placed the plumbing side by side and added in overflow safety pipes for the net zero communal bathroom designs. Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, continued helping with the Treehouse Village Pod 7 renders. This week, he ran final high-quality renders for all the different side views and the first new test render for the complete village, all of which you can see here. Samantha Robinson, 3D designer, 
completed her third week helping on the interior design for the living structure of the Treehouse Village Pod 7. This week's focus, as shown here, was fixing the custom end table designs to not conflict with the underbed shelving, new clock, lamp, and shelving details, and beginning work on the staircase. Rufino Lagundeon, 3D designer, also completed his second week working on the Treehouse Village internal renders for the dining structure. Here's the most recent kitchen render. Rufino also started updating the AutoCAD layout to reflect the new layout details, as shown here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. Hayes Lay, structural engineer, continued work on the city center structural engineering tutorial. What you see here is his third week of writing content. This week's content focus was live loads and wind loads. Dipti Dondurker, electrical engineer, continued with her 46th week of work on the lighting specifics for the city center. This week's focus was fixing last week's program errors, finishing updating the tables and chairs, testing two more lighting layouts for the wall, and adding the loft overhang where we'll be placing additional accent lights. Aravin Vasudovan, mechanical engineer, also continued his work on the city center basement heating and cooling details. This week's focus was completing version 2.0 of the climate battery calculation spreadsheet that we'll be linking to from the city center heating and cooling open source hub. You can see this work here. Fomzi Pulagurtha, mechanical engineer, also completed this updated heat loss into the ground report as part of the city center heating and cooling open source hub. This updated report now includes cross sections showing how the heat from the building decreases as you get deeper into the ground and how heat dissipates differently inside the basement based on the temperature of the surrounding earth. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued editing the food self-sufficiency transition plan pages. We streamlined the food bars page and created the long-term and short-term strategy sections on the new food procurement and storage plan page, as you can see here. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team continued the process of a final proofreading and editing of all 52 lesson plans. This week, we completed the play lesson plan and the sharing lesson plan. This brings us to 46 of 52 finished, which is approximately 89% completion. The core team also researched additional content and resources to expand our Regio, Waldorf, and Orf pages. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. We also added all our related lesson plans to each of our key values pages linked to from our One Community World Change pledge page. You can see some of these here. The One Community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team finished the open source AutoCAD template page and tutorial. This included updating menus, images, formatting, added resources, and more. You can see some of this work here. The core team also invested several more hours developing the graphics showing where all our collaborators and volunteers are from. This information will be featured in our overview video and on the team page. In addition to this, Saumya Manahar, software engineer, web developer, and net application developer, working on the highest good network software, fixed the known issues in the modals and provided a solution for an add-on error that made installing the software problematic. Priti Kotari, information technology enthusiast, also completed her first week helping with this part of the project by taking over development of the leaderboard element, and Neha Verma, software development manager, joined the team and began work on the time logging component. 
Well, there you have it. That is one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards creating a better world for everyone. If you'd like more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit our written blog or visit our website. We've got so much information that covers everything that I've talked about and so much more. We really can only scratch the surface in one of these videos. Take a look at our website. If you'd like to receive an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com and we will add you to our newsletter list or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media. We are on all the different social media networks, about 20 different networks, including, of course, the most popular ones, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr, Reddit. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. Join us there. Manage your social, manage your updates that way if you like, or send us an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com. We'll add you that way. And, of course, thank you for watching to the end. Thank you for your subscriptions to our different accounts. Thank you for following our progress. Thank you for our likes. Thank you for our shares. It's the easiest way to help our project out. Thank you for the donations that we get. And you know, thank you for whatever way that you're choosing to support us, which just watching this video is one great way to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks. <laughs>